Hello, my name is Mark Janesk. I'm Senior Application Engineer with Sila Design Solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the watershed analysis display in Civil 3D. Uh, in this particular model right here, I have a combined surface of an existing site. I have a parking lot area and a little small drainage pond along with a road that bisects the entire site. And I'd like to be able to subdivide this up into various watershed drainage basin areas. And there are a couple tools I can use for that. Um, in my Civil 3D ribbon, if I go to the Analyze tab, um, I can definitely use the Ground Data Flow Paths tool to perform a water drop analysis. So let's say I wanted to find out where the water is flowing. Um, I can use the Flow Path Water Drop Analysis tool choose which surface I want to choose. So I'm going to select my surface. I'm going to make it a 2D polyline water drop. And then as I click on the surface, you'll see the path that any potential drop of water as it fell on the ground would follow to the different drainage areas. But what if I want to identify these drainage areas? Well, the simplest way is to do a display style of the surface and perform a watershed analysis. So in my prospector, if I expand on my surface, there's my combined surface. You'll see there's a section here for watersheds. It is currently empty. Um, in my settings tab, I've created a surface style for watershed areas. If I uh, right click on that and go to edit, um, you can see my tool. Where's my tool? There we go. Um, you can see an information watershed. This is like any other surface style, except there's a section here for watershed. And there are various uh, options that you can set it here. Um, your surface watershed label style. Uh, the, it can, we can have a style for labeling the watershed areas, in which case it's going to show that the type of label will be the ID, the type of watershed. There are several different distinct style of watershed types. Uh, available. You can check the help file of Civil 3D to see what the different types of watershed boundaries are and uh, how they're calculated. Uh, what kind of legend data that I want to show, the boundary point watersheds, boundary chart segment watersheds, so different colorization for the different types of watershed available. In the display tab and my style that I'm going to use, I'm only going to show the border of the entire surface and the watershed analysis data. So that's my surface style. Okay, so to create a watershed, once I have a style created, I can go back to my prospector for my surface, select my surface, uh, and I can either select my surface here, right click, I'll go to surface properties, or I can select my surface and go to surface properties in the ribbon. And I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to change my surface style to watershed. And here on the Surface Properties tab, I'll come to the uh, dialog box, I'll come to the Analysis tab, and I'll change the Analysis type from Elevations to Watersheds. Okay, uh, the options available here, I'm going to use the Watershed Legend that was set up in my Watershed Style. Uh, the Watershed Parameters, I can merge depressions to a single large basin, so I can you know, make sure it subdivides them all into smaller basins, or I can say, hey, if the depressions are less than uh, uh, one foot overall, merge them with the, the surrounding uh, boundary depression um, and go that way. Once, uh, and I can say merge adjacent boundary watersheds. Once those are done, uh, similar to do a elevation or uh, a slope uh, analysis uh, or aspect ratio analysis, I will run the analysis and it will divide up the site into the several different watersheds it's calculated. Um, the data will tell you the, what type it is, which drains in. So if you have consecutive ones, you know, if depression two fills up, uh, depression five fills up, it's going to drain into two. If depression six fills up, it's going to drain into seven. Um, you can have a description here the type of display and the hatch area. So there's styles set up for the different hatch areas. The boundary segments will be blue cross hatch. You can set these styles using the various tools here. Once that's done, just go ahead, hit apply and OK. And you can see the surface style has changed and has gone ahead and calculated out the individual drainage basins. So the styles that we have here shown, we have some 
uh, depression areas, and we have some boundary areas, and we have a couple of multi-drains. The multi-drains say, you know, depending where you're at, the water could split and go into one basin or another. Um, now, if I come back to my analysis tab and run a flow path, I can see the discrete areas where the depressions are. I'll do a couple water drop uh, tests here. So you can see, you know, as long as I'm in this depression area here, no matter where I run my analysis, you can see where the low point is. Whereas if I'm in this boundary area here, you can see where it runs to. The same with this one and the same up here. And these boundary ones mean that it flows off site. Okay, so you can use this. And once you get these in here, if you want to use this for uh, a uh, type of exhibit, uh, once that's done, you can select your surface in your ribbon tab here. We can extract from the surface uh, the objects, and maybe I'll extract the watershed boundaries. In which case, it'll convert these all into hatches and and boundary areas. Um, the other tool I can use once I also get my bound areas, I can use these to help define my existing catchment areas. The, the watershed boundaries are only useful for showing in a display and maybe putting in a, uh, a table. So maybe I'll do my uh, select my, my watersheds. I'll say uh, I'll add a legend, uh, a watershed legend, uh, dynamic, and I'll place it here. So here's my watershed legend. That's the display style that I can I can put. But if I try to export a, a model with pipe objects to, to storm a sanitary analysis, the watersheds would not go along with it. I would need to create catchment areas instead. So I can run a watershed analysis first and use that as a basis for creating catchments. Uh, one of the catchment creation methods, um, I'll come down here to the catchment area of my tool space. I'll create a new catchment group. I'll just call this a watershed catchment. Okay. And uh, I'll create a new catchment from surface. So when you're running the catchment for surface, it's looking for the discharge point. So if I want to use these areas, and so let's say, uh, because catchment areas move to storm and sanitary analysis, I can import these in there and define my, my drainage areas, uh, but I need to know where the discharge point is to accurately mirror the catchments to my watershed. I can use that location where the water drop ended and say, okay, this is my discharge point, and then create my catchment area. So you can see my, my catchment area now 100% mirrors my watershed area. So um, that is uh, definitely one way that I can use um, the, the product to uh, perform my watershed analysis first, then come back through and create my catchment areas. And like I said, you know, once I create all my catchments, when I import this data into Civil 3, or into Storm and Sanitary Analysis, these catchment areas will contain the data. By the way, catchment areas also show the time of concentration line. So uh, that's something you can use for your exhibits. So I hope it helped a little bit. You understand a little bit how watersheds work. You can understand uh, how we can use the watershed data to create uh, accurate existing catchment areas for analysis and storm and sanitary analysis. Um, if you'd like to know more, please go ahead and email me at mshinesk at siler-ds.com. You can also email us at cadtechnical at siler-instrument.com, silerinst.com. Uh, please follow us on our blog, uh, www.siler-ds.com forward slash blog. Uh, stay tuned. Next week, I'll be putting together another uh, quick video on using uh, watershed analysis in InfraWorks. Thank you, and have a great day.